week. Dance! And if the restaurant menu were handwritten, would you be more likely to eat the zombie deer meat? All that and more on this week's very special double guest episode of... Did you order the Code Red? You can't handle the truth. Robot Lady, sound the alarm! Warning. The following podcast is another wasted hour. Warning. The following podcast is another wasted hour. Don't waste my motherfucking time! We're going to change everything, Adam. From now on, the show is just going to be con- uh, 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 congressional hearings. Well, yeah, congressional we'll br- hearings. Yeah, we'll bring bands in and we'll just be like, did you have contact with that person? Does this mean I get to be the majority whip? Yes. You can, <laughs> anytime you want. I'm assuming that's the guy that gets to have the whips to keep people in check. I, no, I, sorry. Other way around. I assumed that that was, the, uh, that was how you described your relationship. A majority whips. <laughs> and during some of my darker, lonelier times, sure. Yeah, absolutely. You have, a, you have a couple drinks, you go out to a club, you find what looks like a boarded up row house and think, oh, why not? There's some music playing from in Bring there. Out and the gimp. <laughs> <laughs> you hit on a couple nice. girls, you uh, get uh, turned down, then, you know, go home for a little self flagellation in a matter of speaking. <laughs> um, the next night, you find yourself suspended from the ceiling and talking about safe words. <laughs> right, exactly. And you're alone, which is weird. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show, everybody. Uh, this is another Wasted Hour. As you know, the next hour of your life is going to be replaced with two ignorant, uninformed, ill-advised, self-deprecating morons ranting about opinions they have no right to have, which are probably wrong and absolutely do not matter. Our goal here at Another Wasted Hour is to convince you that where we hail from, just outside Washington, D.C., is not just a city of politics and scandals and congressional hearings, but one brimming with art, music, and culture. As impossible as that may seem. So listeners, now that you know why you're here in studio, we have Ryan and Chad from the brand new super group, Irresponsible Stone Driver. Yeah. Woo! I would argue Stone Driver was always irresponsible. <laughs> That's right. So Dan. So it's a good fit. So Dan, welcome to the show. Hello. Say hi to everyone. Oh, hey, sorry. Uh, you're saying Dan. Oh, Ryan. So hey. Ryan. Why am I saying that? How's it going? Ryan. Hello, Ryan. Hello, That was my a man. perfect look. It was, nobody could see it on radio, <laughs> but you're like, who the hell are you looking at right now? <laughs> Ryan from Irresponsible. So um, we had you booked on the show, and then I felt like the only way that I could really do justice for your band is to double book you with another band and be irresponsible myself. And a better looking guy, and it's messed up, but here we are. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, we're lucky we're on radio or you'd realize that was a lie. No. <laughs> <That's true. Nope. laughs> uh, so uh, welcome back to the show. It, ironically, so we did this double booking completely by accident. I uh, saw an em- em- uh, empty spot on my uh, calendar. I was like, well, I'll definitely fill that. And then I guess I emailed two people and were like, who wants it? And I was like, both. Good. Damn. <laughs> but the irony is I, both of you have been on the show before about two years ago. It's true. We kind of are like yeah. circling each other's paths. This was meant to happen, I think, is what's happening. I'm, so. I'm surprised we both came back. I mean, <laughs> statistically speaking, us, this, this is an anomaly. Us but, as well. Wow. We're, 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 we're not sure why you're so masochistic, but um, but you are back. Uh, this, uh, this year, two years from when you came on the first time, you've got a brand new video that's uh, that just came out. Yeah, sure uh, do. It's called Beautiful Baby. It is. Uh, we have a, a a little sample of the music, the the, the song, um, later on in the show. If people want to hear the entire song, fast forward to the one hour mark of the show and they can listen to it uh, completely. Um, you also have a show Saturday, March 9th. Uh, it's a 311 tribute show. We do. We're doing a 311 tribute show because it's right up next to 311 Day. Oh, well, that and makes so perfect sense. Yeah. Every year well. on 311 Day, we get together with some other guys and do a big 311 tribute, and it's and, coming up. And this one's at Jam and Java in, in Vienna, Virginia. Yep. Great club. Great yeah. club. Oh, one of the best in the area. One of the best would, in the world. I would argue. One of the best. So uh, where can people go to see your brand new video? So you'd go to YouTube and go Irresponsible Beautiful Baby. I feel You'll like I don't there. want to search for that on YouTube. Interesting. <laughs> like, you know, I hadn't really thought about that part yet. Maybe saying it out loud changes my perspective on it. Oh, a bit. God. Oh, turn <laughs> no. it off. Turn this is why your writing off. professor told you to read your own work back to yourself before you turned it in. That's so funny. <laughs> this list is going to be horrifying. Maybe you should just go through our uh, Facebook page then and maybe. click it through it there. <laughs> just to be safe. Yeah. Maybe that's better. So maybe people go to facebook.com slash irresponsible music. 
Yeah, then, that'll that'll get you there. Then they'll find the video that yeah. way. Okay, that's better than just doing a search in Google and ending up on Pornhub. <laughs> um, uh, so speaking of Pornhub, we have Chad from Stone Driver here in studio. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> My favorite actor. Uh, yes. You also have a video that's come out, but you don't want people to know about that, and it is on Pornhub. It, well, <laughs> it's, uh, again, uh, with the state of music that we were talking about before with yeah. uh, low sales and uh, you know or low return in Spotify and Apple Music, yeah. certainly bands are diversifying. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> stonedriver.com, we have our uh, video for a Voodoo Woman on that if people want to check it out. And uh, there are some links there if you'd like to kind of Go a little deeper. Can you put a music video on Pornhub? I feel uh, like yes, we actually. Should, I think we should do that. Yeah, because it's people are on there, that site, right? And then you just you just add your music video to it, and they're like, and they're like typing away, and it's like suggested next, suggested next, just and then so they're like, what's this? And then just there. your music, and you're like, oh, you, you could start doing like the soundtracks or something. Like oh. the, here's here's the survival of music. We must link together. No longer will it be mm. that. Right. You know, you, you got to all demographics. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. We'll it's have new. all genres now. In yes. Porn. You, you can add it to the uh, to the list. So you are playing uh, Saturday, March 9th as well. Oh, I was going to. But this show for the 311 tribute sounds pretty good, man. I might, <laughs> I might be ducking out. It might be uh, just uh, I'll three switch and fellows. go to pies and well. <laughs> <laughs> We're switching members. Yes. <laughs> it's, you know, it's like uh, I don't know what it's like, but uh, yeah. <laughs> and you're gonna be you're gonna be down at uh, Dangerously Delicious Pies. That's down in Washington D.C. Yeah, right on H Street. Mm -hmm. It's uh, we're uh, very lucky to be playing with uh, both uh, Betamax and Not My Vice. Uh, Betamax is the uh, new uh, group from X Minor Threat bassist Steve Hankson. So yeah. I've got to hear or been lucky to hear some of their uh, new tracks they're recording. They're freaking awesome. Not by Vice is a uh, younger band, freaking hungry, just rocks the fuck out. So now uh, here's the important question: Is Beta Max recording their new album at Inner Ear? Do you awesome. know? I do know because that's where Minor Threat did all a bunch of their stuff. Yeah, right? I don't and, think so. I know uh, I was talking with them, and I guess like Ian McKay actually like showed up at the recording session. And yeah, yeah, still in, in in touch, but. Uh, like all the Discord stuff went through that. that oh yeah, video, so I'd be curious. I, I'll find out. Yeah, we yeah. recorded our first album there, and it was awesome. You know, all the oh yeah, great punk legends on the wall. And Don, Freaking who humbly. runs the place, is an, an amazing he's human the man. Being. Like he's a guy that should just treat you like crap because he's like, oh look at all of these albums like yeah. I've produced, right? <laughs> and he doesn't. He's like, hey guys, come on in, like, and tries to make like your thing the Very best cool. thing he's ever done. And you're like, that thank you, guy who has all of these like in help basically helped a movement happen yes right and uh yeah so uh, I'd, wow. I'd be curious if they if they're going back there for yeah. old time's sake I'll, I'll figure out um and you have we have a track from you called chasing demons that's from an album also called chasing demons yeah we, we the the band tried to keep it simple for me on like the script front so uh <laughs> yeah yeah it's, uh we released it uh back in may and uh just uh glad that it's uh been received well by most so far and is an uh, awesome track well, yeah well thank you. Hell yeah. thank you we're gonna have a sample of that a little bit later but if people want to listen to that now i i guess you would go to the one hour and four minute mark or something like that <laughs> how long so is like your track about three and a half minutes yeah so, so you're go to right the one on hour and three and a half minute mark <laughs> to actually can... Keith, tell you what leave yeah. about a half second of silence and i'll shout it in post <laughs> <laughs> all right ready uh, and yeah. one hour two minutes 48 seconds all right, good that, that's about all the time i need <laughs> perfect <laughs> uh, so yeah go to that mark and then uh you'll be able to listen uh if you want to skip over irresponsible's music for some reason which seems you rude. don't just you listen don't. through the whole thing it's... Our, ours is going to sound worse so <laughs> no. yeah. yeah uh and skip if you want to find out more about uh what they're doing the music that's coming out and up other upcoming shows go to stonedriver.com to find out more you know i was thinking about it we, we talked about doing something uh really topical uh, we were talking about maybe the uh, the congressional hearings. We talked about that a little bit early mm -hmm. in the in thing. But I, I we have a very little amount of time in our intro left. And I really want to touch on something that I think is way more important. So if you've been listening to the podcast, uh, we did a podcast, two podcasts ago uh, with Yellow Tie Guy, a good friend of ours, Daniel. And um, you may recognize the name Stone Driver because he did an interview with them uh, for uh, alchemicalrecords.com. Uh, so you can go up there and check that out. That's a, a March first. Yeah, March first. Oh, March first is yep, when that yep. comes. So um, go check that out. But uh, 
because we had Stone Driver on before and I talked to them a few times, we we were laughing about uh, a whole thing about bags of dicks, right? And we determined uh, gummy dicks, what would be the worst bag of dicks, bunch of little dicks or one giant dick that you would have to like bite pieces off of and stuff. And we determined <laughs> the large gummy dick way worse, right? Did anybody vote the other way? No, I think we all agreed, right? The giant Giant well, no, I think dick? I think my response was that I would love the one giant one so that I could just make the Nick Offerman style video of me just staring into the camera <laughs> deadpan while slowly <laughs> chewing the giant gummy dick. Right. So, all right. So everybody didn't want the big dick uh, except for Adam. He loves the big dick. Uh, so Would love. Yeah, would. Uh, hypothetically. <laughs> possibly. So uh, that brings us around to like this week when uh, I went and got in the mail and I got this uh, innocuous like brown box and... It didn't have an address I recognized. I hadn't ordered anything. And uh, and so I opened it up. And sure enough, there's a... I've got it right here. This here, if you can hear that. This is a a package of gummy dicks. A bag of dicks. <laughs> and I found it, it... I swear to God, I did not see a, a letter in it or anything that said who it was from. So I thought, well, is it Daniel or is Adam like getting it? No. Chad did it, which is brilliant, Chad. <laughs> I, you know, the, I was hoping to get you something new, but I see yeah. that you have several boxes of them here already. So <laughs> we can <laughs> right. you know, Amazon exchange it if that would uh, if, if that would be more appropriate. But uh, this is amazing because I had no idea who had done it. Um, so I think we, what we need to do here is uh, let's kick this off the right way. This show. I'm open up our bag of dicks. Guys, would you like to share some dicks with me? Only a clear one. Please. <laughs> Thought you'd never ask. Here, yeah. There you go. Have a, Thank you. Have a have a dick. Jam that in your mouth. This will Go be ahead good and chuck one of those through the Cat Five connection, so I can get one up here in Baltimore. <laughs> I will. I will bring. I don't you. know if it'll fit. We'll describe <laughs> it to you. I'm gonna go with this gangrene kind nice of looking scent. gummy <laughs> dick. <laughs> Nothing better than radio, where you're listening to people chew on gummy things. But you know what? This is gonna be great for me to edit later. Mm -hmm, mm, um, 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 it's good. Well, this is all I'll say about it. It's delicious. Yeah, it's a little floral. There's some. I hope I don't have like an insulin attack or something. Mm. Like, it's like the paramedics will show up and be like, "What did you eat? What did you have?" Oh, it's a bag of gummy dicks. Man. Yeah, it was a bag of dicks. Yeah, he 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 got me a bunch of tiny gummy dicks and I put them all in my mouth. I love fruit snacks. Mm -hmm. They taste kind of like fruit snacks. They are kind of like fruit yeah. snacks. These are very yummy. I could eat these all day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so I was. So what you tell me, Keith, is you just need to make put a bowl of them on your desk at work. Don't tell anyone what they are. Just have them there occasionally. Fish one out and eat it. It's, it's see like how death, long it takes someone to notice. <laughs> death to Smoochie, if you've seen that with yeah. the cookies and uh, you know <laughs> me, uh, his soul rest, uh, Robin Williams. Mm -hmm. was, yeah. And I would probably never double book the show again because I'd have so much time because I'd be fired from <laughs> putting dicks on my on my desk. Um, so excellent. Uh, again, Irresponsible Stone Driver. Uh, go check out Irresponsible at irresponsiblemusic.com or Facebook slash Irresponsible Music. Uh, go check out uh, Stone Driver at stonedriver.com. We'll talk more about all of these things soon, but I want to make sure we move on because we've got so much to cover. So we are going to move on to, oh, my little, my little pad turned off. That's not good. All right, let's try this again. Oh, why is this? There we go. We're going to do the weather report. So this is where we're going to make you the editor in chief of your brand new publication. I think it's better if you uh, work together to make a publication. All the right. Daily Planet. It's a conglomerate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Much like the news these days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah so. um, we're going to pitch you some stories that we found out on the internet. You're going to let us know whether or not they make it into the publication. Um, at the end, we're going to need to know what the name of your publication is. So think about that. Yeah, okay. You got to be creative. Okay. All right. So without further ado, let's start with Adam. Keith, good news. Yes. It turns out I may have accidentally scared you needlessly two weeks ago. Okay. Because apparently eating zombie deer meat is safe, researchers say. Oh, thank God. Yes. <laughs> Just so, because you can doesn't mean you should. <laughs> yep. No, so apparently, um, so I, I, I reported two weeks ago that there was this uh, zombie deer uh, virus or chronic wasting disease as yeah. it's more commonly known um, that was sweeping through deer bison moose things yeah. like that up in a bunch of states 
And people were starting to get worried, like, hey, hunters are killing these animals that don't necessarily have symptoms yet and then eating the meat. And could it jump the species barrier like Mad Cow did? Mm -hmm. Well, apparently it doesn't give any context. It just says tainted deer meat was unwittingly served to 200 to 250 people at a fire company in New York. And since then, they've just been studying them. Hmm. (laughs) Do they know? Or they They know. They've had like binoculars just from a distance, like anything happening there. Each of them has just like a red dot on the back of their head, just in case they go nuts. <laughs> they're like, well, I'm going to eat people. And yeah. then they're, they're down. Pliskin, like uh, explosive in the. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Is it like scanners? Wasn't that the uh, movie? Escape where... from New York. No, oh, right, right, right. Yeah. Their yeah. head just goes. Pfft. Yeah. Well, scanners. You know, yeah. They yeah. definitely. Uh, oh, okay. That's what I'm saying. I just, I just thought it was kind of strange that you know we're just starting to hear about it now except apparently these people were accidentally served the tainted meat back in 2005 oh well that's a good sign if nothing's happened then (laughs) after 14 years of study they said all right that's a pretty good study yeah it's a little horrifying that they didn't know did they know up until this point they had to have right well i'm sure when the antlers grew out of their head they probably (laughs) realized something was wrong i like they knew what they, they apparently knew right about the time it happened and they all volunteered to uh, be in this study basically every two years they check in to see if there's been any new symptoms or anything like that but that but worries me is the check in every two years when you're talking about potential zombie apocalypse yeah two years seems like an awful long time for that to you know get out of hand well I figure if they, it happened in between the two years they would have heard about it <laughs> <laughs> a couple uh, of new cases coming through I just said why didn't they include this at the beginning like if this happened, like, you know, 15 years ago or whatever, and we knew it was perfectly safe, and it had already, like, they'd already done the study, I don't know why when we reported it, like, two or three weeks ago, they weren't like, oh my god, there's zombie deer, don't worry, it's fine, we've already studied it. Now, do they know if the zombie deer were eating other zombie deer? Oh, that's a good question. Cannibal Nothing about deer. that, just that they start to lose coordination, stumbling around, lose all fear, Looking and become like very that. aggressive. Okay. They very aggressive. So basically, nice. like like a third date. <laughs> right? Is that, no, that's how I describe it, it. The buck stops here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I really need to get a stinger of Victor groaning. <laughs> Just drop into the show every once in a while. All right. So the question is: Is it news? So the news story would be that it's safe. Is that yeah? Correct? That you can eat zombie meat. You can eat zombie meat. Yeah. So, so I would just throw out there for consideration, uh-huh. co-editor, is that yes. uh, this is like a positive outcome. You know, okay. it's a happy, it's a happy, uh, it's a happy ending. A happy ending, therefore, probably not newsworthy. <laughs> <It's> not <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I'm also inclined to uh, not air this story. Okay. Um, you know, I figure swing at, uh, don't swing at the first pitch. You know, we'll see what we got coming next. I like that. Yeah, I like that. Uh, all right. Now I know why you always make me go first. Yeah. Except that you usually win, so it doesn't work out for me. (laughs) Uh, study claims that handwritten menus trick people into thinking that they're eating healthier. Right off the bat, I want that story in my publication. I don't know what they wrote on there. Like, I assume that the menu said, like, you're eating healthier, but it was, like, in handwriting. Sounds like a BuzzFeed (laughs) article, and let's let's roll it. Yeah. Unless my esteemed co-editor... Would like to. Uh, I, I already started hitting the Irish coffees a little early in the uh, the editing office, so oh. I'm just gonna go with whatever. Uh, <laughs> in, in, <laughs> with for the with party. you say, I like it. I like yeah. it. See, Keith, so, here, here's why I call BS on that. Sure. Because when you said handwritten menus, the first thing I thought of is when like the little kids want to make mommy and daddy dinner for the first time. Yeah. And they make the menu in crown. It's like, huh? I'm not sure how healthy mac and cheese with a crown topping. Yeah. Uh, is but sure we'll, we'll uh humor them that kid's not using gmos it's fine <laughs> you're good is this gluten-free yeah uh research are, are, are crowns gluten-free i'm not sure oh probably yeah they're full of other things you don't want to eat but gluten you're probably fine it's the paste i worry about that that probably did a number on my liver amongst yeah other things <laughs> so researchers uh, researchers offered the studies 185 mm-hmm. participants 
two different menus for a uh, made up restaurant called Riley's Kitchen. One done up in the popular Helvetica font and the other in a folksier scribbly typeface. Half of the patrons were told the restaurant featured locally grown, non GMO, antibiotic free ingredients. The rest were just handed the menu. And apparently they found there was quite a notable change just by the font. So if it was a scribblier looking handwritten thing, they thought mm-hmm. this seems, I assume, more homemade or uh, I, we don't know exactly what it was that, that they gotcha. said they felt like it was more healthy. I was just impressed. He said Helvetica or whatever. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was pretty good. Like, that I zoned out at that. I was like, <laughs> Wait, my God. Yeah, you challenged my brain. But now like <laughs> elementary school science class, Adam is calling BS on the study because they've got two variables. <laughs> that's fair One, the two different fonts and True. half were told about the whole True. non-gmo and all that and half yeah. weren't yeah that's but two variables that's not a scientific yeah, study you're that's not, just trying to win points on buzzfeed groups. you've got four groups oh. at that point oh they're saying the uh, font affected just as much as the yeah. telling the people so you're saying telling people right and then you've got the font and then the font so there's one group of a fourth of the study that weren't told and uh and had a normal font one fourth that uh, weren't told and had the new font, and one uh, one fourth that had the new font and were told, and one that had the old font and were told. So those are all separate bits. And then they found out that across those two columns, essentially, mm-hmm. um, both of the both of the groups, either if they were told or not told, if they had the scribbly font, they thought it was more healthy. I'd probably just be like, hell, they're freaking writing without spell check, like. This yeah. has got to be legit. Yeah. Right. I, I respect that. <laughs> Courage. I, have, I, st- I have two issues with it, right? For for one, I would be like, I, I assume that there's a threshold, right? Because if I hand write just like rat poison, nobody's going to be like, that seems like it's going to be fine. <laughs> so there's got to be like, if I'm just like, you know, bacon flavored ice cream fat, right? There like, you go. Nobody's going to go in there. That's fine. That's it's it's handwritten. It's got to be healthy. The I'm going to do our next album cover that way, by the way. The second thing is they gave these people menus and they were like, hey, what do you think? And they were like, oh, this sounds very good. And they were like, it's not a real restaurant. They're like, well, now I'm fucking hungry. Yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> not cool, man. Yeah. This might as well be that shock uh, experiment where they think they're shocking uh, the, the person. The authority. Uh, yeah. Uh, totally. Not it's Zimbardo, torture. But, they're uh, they're yeah. torturing these people is what I'm saying. Uh, so is it Back news? Back when psychology was cool. Yeah. <laughs> is it news? <laughs> well, I... I think we agreed. Let's that put it, it was. in the finance section. Yeah. All right, in the finance section. Right. Adam, straight out of London, gangs use vacuum cleaners to steal parking meter cash. I don't know how this works, but that sounds awesome. <laughs> Although so there is, it there's a little bit more hard. to it than just a vacuum. Yeah, it does seem mm. weird because it seems like as you're walking around the city with a vacuum, someone might be like. What are you doing? And they're like, we're cleaning up the streets. Like, you can't. You don't have a good. You <laughs> There's no like, way teenagers know how to clean these right? days. Why yeah. do you have a vacuum? I mean, <laughs> look at like what if you recall Cool Hand Luke, or at least the film, yeah, with, uh, Paul Newman. You know, he did not have the benefit of vacuum. So to me, I was thinking more lock, stock, and two smoking Dysons. Personally, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice. Where's the groan? Uh, <laughs> I guess. But I would propose to uh, the, uh, the to Ryan here, mm-hmm. not Dan, that uh, this might be a major advancement, you know, from the Cool Hand Luke days to yeah. uh, to to present time. Huge. You know, maybe like a popular mechanics, uh, you know, update or or something of that nature. I think that that's really fair. The thing that he left out of this story is over the past two years, they've evolved from Swiffer's. <laughs> what does that work me guys I don't know Q Victor groan <laughs> they got <laughs> they got the uh, electricity working for them let's let's run it man how long uh, is that cord <laughs> is they're running it out to the parking lot that's what she said <laughs> I feel like we should be eating gummy dicks again um, <laughs> oh no uh, all right so once you pop you can't stop yeah is it is it news we're running it. Yeah. All right. We got news. Hooray. Millions of Ugandans quit the internet after introduction of social media attacks. There are so many layers to this, guys. Wow. First, Uganda has the internet. I didn't know this. <laughs> Second, there were people in Uganda who were on the internet, and I've not met a single one of them, which is weird because I've met Nigerians. I've... Uh, 
I've definitely you know that Prince too. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm I'm a little surprised that I had no idea. Uh, so millions of them have jumped off of social media. None of us have noticed. Huh. Well, that's interesting. Uh, the last thing we need to consider is this: our government's very good at figuring out ways to get money from us. <laughs> Uh, social media tax sounds horrifying to me. Terrible. Right? How how much would you be willing to spend in social media tax before you just were like, I'm never hitting Facebook again? I want to know who I have to pay to have that tax introduced in such a way that it just kills social media so I don't have to deal with it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm gonna I'm gonna side with uh just talking out loud with with, with you on that one. Uh you yeah. know, Uganda in the next 10 years might become the next superpower of the world. <laughs> right. Because they're not on social media. Yeah. It's like if, you know, Ireland didn't invent, you know, whiskey or, you know, whatnot. It, it would be this like booming metropolis with like flying cars and, and whatnot. So, <laughs> so you're saying that amazing. a whiskeyless Ireland would have turned into Wakanda. Yes. yes. That's what you're yes. saying. Yeah. It's a Black Panther movie. So, this is the beginning. Would that be, I, I, I don't would know. That, that would I be would like a, my, a my Mikonda? Colleague. What's that? Would, would, would it, I'm just wondering aloud if that would be called a like a like a, a Mick Conda. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or no, Oconda. Yeah. You, know, think... you know Marvel's running out of ideas when they <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're we're under a dome. Look at us. Um, so I think uh yeah, no, I think you make a really valid point. It would just be like twenty years from now they'd be like, uh, we've uh, created all of these nuclear weapons and we were able to go full solar for everything, and they're like how did you do all this? And they're like, we just got off social media and did shit. Like we actually, <laughs> with our free time, we made things. <laughs> we used to be a country that made stuff. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So I don't, I don't know. Is it news? That's the question. I would say it's news. I mean, it's the beginning. Being possibly that they're about to, yeah. To take over the world. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, I would agree. I'd probably be like checking like Instagram likes at the time when the article, like, you know, ran or something like that so i might miss it but i, right. I would agree it's definitely exactly. newsworthy yeah that'll just... be in the international section yes <laughs> there's a lot of sections yeah. and all of your sections have one story in them. this is a robust uh, uh news outlet we're, we're building creating. it out i like yeah this. no it's very varied <laughs> all right so now we're entering into our uh lightning round we're just gonna throw some headlines at you if you have questions we'll try to answer but we probably don't have any answers Hmm. Shampoo Bandit steals hundreds of dollars worth in Niagara Falls. No way. Wait, one more time? What? what? Shampoo Bandit steals hundreds of dollars worth in Niagara Falls. I don't even... How do you steal hundreds of dollars worth of shampoo? I don't want to publicize <laughs> that monster's name. It's, <laughs> it's dealing with, like, Canada. I mean, like... You know. Yeah, we already have our international here's, section. Here's how we make this news. He takes the hundred dollars, hundreds of dollars worth of shampoo... Puts it in Niagara Falls bubble bath. Nah, how we're talking. <laughs> that was, would be amazing. That would be amazing. Uh -huh. uh, when, when I read the article, I was totally hoping it would be like a Snedley Whiplash type thing. Like, ha ha, I've made Niagara Falls foamy. <laughs> <laughs> I've won. Ah! Yes. <laughs> um, all right. So is, is it news? Uh, not for me. No, I, I would. I would absolutely. Oh, concur. no, not. Yeah. Okay. This uh, my pad is just going crazy. It now wants me to download uh, Amazon Prime Video if I want to make noises. And Put you see things... how social media is right. <laughs> oh, I've, I've got it. Look at that. I got. We, we're back. Bam. Why would it close in the middle of a show just to give me an ad? I mean, because you me... haven't given your social media tax. Hey, right. Yeah. Exactly. That's what I need. Bezos is watching. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, did everybody? Uh, did anyone watch the uh, Oscars or anything? Uh, no, I didn't catch a second of the Oscars actually. Uh, so nothing against that. Uh, Rami Malek's uh, acceptance speech uh, had the word "gay man." Yeah, you know, he was uh, the gentleman who played uh, Queen uh -huh. of, uh, Bohemian Mercury. Rhapsody. Yeah. yeah, Freddie Mercury. Uh -huh. um, so he referred to Freddie Mercury as a as a gay man, which I think some people are up in arms about uh, because uh, I believe he was bisexual, and so people are like, "That's oh. not right." Gotcha. He was bisexual. And, we we're like, but he was also a gay man. That's what that means is he's like a gay man and not a gay man at the same time. Um, but <laughs> besides he, that, so his this is a this is a sexuality, Keith, not Clark Kent versus Superman. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> they can both make out. It's fine. Uh, so his acceptance speech uh, was censored in China. 
Oh. <laughs> and the word gay man was replaced with special person. Oh. Wow. Yeah. That's that's where they've gotten to now in China. <laughs> They're like, whoa, Christ. do not let people know about that. <laughs> we call them special people here. Wow. I mean, that that just, uh, that's kind of like two wrongs. I mean, it's right. like, first off, like, you know, who the F cares? You know, right. number one, like, he's a freaking amazing singer and, you know, obviously brought a lot of uh, uh, spotlight to the AIDS epidemic that was yeah. going on at the time. Oh, absolutely. And then number two, they're going special person. And I don't know if they're referring to like special needs people oh. or, you know, et cetera. So it's right. like two kind of like quasi kind of bigoted things to say so i yeah. I, I don't know if he's you so know. brave yeah. um, <laughs> it's really too bad yeah it's weird to be like to censor someone who's not with us anymore to me like to be like you know oh that gay guy that's not alive and we're like well we don't want people to know you know like he's already gone like he's not gonna he's not gonna go gay up your country he's not here anymore that's it, like I don't even understand that. Really goes to show you how we're still in like the nascent stages of I guess human evolution, where oh, yeah. it's so obvious that it's like okay to have free speech and all that over here to us. Yeah, but then you have like a really really populous country that still is like you know has a government that doesn't exactly support it, all free speech. You it know? does feel like a weird thing to censor, mm -hmm. right? If he had gone up there and was like. Freddie Mercury liked dicks. And they were like, well, let's take the dicks out of there. Like, I mean, oh, yeah, I can see. And we'll replace that with gummy dicks. And that'll make it okay. Um, then I, I'd understand. But it, it's just weird to be like, that's just the way the person is. And to be like, well, we don't want people knowing that. That is very. Yeah, I'm. I'm just kind of yeah. in their defense. In their defense, none of the Christopher Robin books ever dealt with homosexuality. Now that Winnie the Pooh is the president, they had, you know, Ooh. had a hard time getting around it. Low blow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they banned Pardon Winnie the Pooh. Pardon the, uh, the the pun, but yeah, uh, yeah. I, th right, I think we're now banned in China, Keith. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's fine. We're banned. In, if we could get banned in China, that's what our goal should be for the next year: <laughs> is to get banned in China. That's, just say Winnie the Pooh every every ep, yeah. you know, episode. And, That's our uh, new logo. We can get <laughs> Winnie the Pooh gummies. Well, we're, <laughs> we're trashing their special person policy, so yeah, they're they probably going to ban us anyway. They're pretty mad about it, I yeah. would think, uh, if, if they ever listened. Um, so, <laughs> is it news? I would say... Uh, Chad, you can't, you can't shake your head on the radio. It's an interesting one. It's, <laughs> it's not... Yes, I can. Watch it, me. It's not going to make me they happy can. to print it. <laughs> It's not going to make me happy to print it, but I would feel some sort of responsibility just because it's like got to be pointing out the places that still need it. Would you distribute this publication in China? Because at that point, it would just say like his speech said special person and was replaced <laughs> with special person. And they would be I would, confused. but I wouldn't travel there after that. <laughs> uh, so it is or it isn't? What I don't know. Do you want to leave it out? Well, I would say, or I would say we for consideration, if we put it out there yeah. it would be like a look at these idiots uh, right or, or, or right. you know what kind section of would that admonishment in? not Opinion. the international section the comedic <laughs> um let's let's put Special it in uh, our human rights section ah okay uh, there you go I like right. that all right right florida woman claims wind blew cocaine into her purse <laughs> um, is this rose mcgowan <laughs> <laughs> That was the name of her drug dealer. <laughs> hey, this is uh, Win Win Johnson. <laughs> awesome. Where was Don't this again? Would... I need to book a vacation. <laughs> yeah, <I know>. Florida, <laughs> Fort oh, Pierce. Uh, they smelled marijuana. They found cocaine and marijuana in her purse, and she claimed that oh, it was a windy day. No it wind must have just blew. blown the bags of drugs into her purse. So <laughs> they didn't say that they smelled cocaine because that would kind of <laughs> implicate the police. And yeah. uh, you know, this smells like cocaine. If you know what I mean. If you know what I mean. <laughs> Do you know uh, what I mean? I, 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 I could I totally do that. We could go yeah. smell that. And we could do that, and then oh, they got a traffic stop over there. We gotta get our over there first, though. <laughs> I'm not addicted to cocaine. I just like the smell of it. Um, so. <laughs> Did did she say it about the uh the weed as well? Did you did you catch that in the story at all? Because you said uh, originally it was according the to police report, Posey responded, "It's a windy day. It must have flown through the window and into my purse." Is the only quote I have. Okay, amazing. Because originally you said the cocaine, which would make it really hilarious if she was like, they were like, "We found this this pot and this cocaine," and she's like, "Well, the cocaine isn't mine. 
<laughs> I mean, yeah, the pot's mine, totally. Yeah, but the other one's probably the wind. She's hedging. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why would I admit to the, to the weed if if I wasn't being honest right now? She's kind of brilliant if that's the direction she went with it. Um, no word on that. It is Florida, so probably not. Yeah. Mm. Is it news? Mm. I don't know if we have a crime section yet in our uh, our publication. <laughs> Probably mm-hmm. should. But this could be a, uh, you know, we could turn mm-hmm. it into like a, a dare thing, like stay off drugs or you will make up End stories up. about, <laughs> you know, cocaine tornadoes, you know, coming in with the, uh, the hurricanes down there. <laughs> yep. It's a hell of a storm. All right. Last but not least, vandals who spray painted racial slurs return to spray paint. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like they may have missed the point somewhat. But I appreciate the sentiment. I really do. They cleaned uh, cleaned off the racial slurs when they came back and they were like, sorry about the racial slurs. That Are we sure this just isn't one of Banksy's more challenging pieces? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like one of those like human condition or, you know, kind of stories. It's like they first kind of evolve and learn not to be like a right. racist prick. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe in the future, future they'll learn about like not defacing property. <laughs> exactly. But the first one I feel like is more important. Yeah, it's a they, huge step. Well, they're it ab- is. They're about to hit a moral quandary, right? Because now they've said sorry, and then when they find out they shouldn't be vandalizing, they'll be like, "Oh my god, I feel terrible." How do we tell them? Like <laughs> we don't. <laughs> we need to find a way to let them know we're sorry <laughs> oh. about the vandalism, and we social guys, media tax it. Yep. Send them a bag of dicks. Oh. <laughs> no, that wasn't. No, I'm sorry. He missed. All right. So, also news, news, not news. I'll put it in if you put it in. <laughs> Were we still talking that, about that's, that's what no, I'm work he on. said. I say it's we, the subject. Are we back to the special people? <laughs> you started talking about bags of dicks again. Yeah. And- I, I I would absolutely concur. With, All right, uh, let's the, do it. Uh, the the media editor here. All right, so uh, what's <laughs> what's the name of this uh, uh, this particular publication? Now that we've figured out all the things that go into it, wow, which are basically all my things. Hmm. Yeah. How about the very important news? <laughs> I think that that's that's the good. VIN, the Daily VIN, the, the Daily <laughs> VIN. Yeah. Oh, I love it. The right. Daily VIN. The VIN. All right, the oh, Daily VIN. God, we're gonna be rich. Yeah. Check your newsstands. Acronyms. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Check your newsstands for the uh, the Daily VIN. Uh, will be coming there shortly. I'm sure. Handwritten. Handwritten because <laughs> it's better for you. Amazing. All right. Uh, so. Uh, let's talk a little bit about music, since that's something that you uh, both do. And this um, podcast is ostensibly about. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes. Skirting around the periphery. <laughs> uh, so let's uh, start off with Ryan. Um, again, you're going to be uh, playing a 311 tribute uh, show Saturday, March 9th at Jam and Java in Vienna, Virginia. Hell yes. But we have a track from you called uh, Beautiful Baby. There's a new video out on uh, for that. Uh, do you want to tell us a little yeah. bit about the video? Like, what was that like making a video? Have you done this before? Yeah, sure. Yeah, we've made other videos. We had a lot of fun with this one. In fact, uh, it went exactly how we envisioned. So I hit up our our guy Francisco Campos Lopez. Mm-hmm. He made our last video for American Dreaming. Very cool. And um, we knew we wanted to work uh, with him to do another one. And I called him up. And I'm like, all right, Francisco, here's my idea. Yeah. I want to hit this video really simple, straightforward in one day. We like bring the three of us. We don't have to get a bunch of extras involved. Yeah. The three of us take us around and let's hit this video. Yeah. Because we already had the song ready to roll and we wanted to make it happen. You didn't want to delay it a whole exactly. lot. Exactly. No. And uh, our previous two videos had been kind of involved with like uh, just organizing a lot of things. Sure. And we really liked the results from that, but we wanted a, a stripped down one for this one. Yeah. And uh, he really came through. We met up over at National Harbor. Yeah. And started shooting and uh, he directed us through the day, brought us over to Alexandria Waterfront, did a bunch more shots. Mm -hmm. And uh, TJ, John, and I had a really great time, man. A lot of it, like, speaks to, like, what I would expect of a music video. Like, not the conceptual ones that that, uh, are are maybe, like, better known. um, Yeah. But that kind of, like, just 
we're doing music and this is the music video to go with it to introduce you to the people who are making the music. Hell yeah. Uh, it felt like that. It was like, it's almost like early MTV, right? Where the, the thing that all you needed to know is like, who are the people doing this? Nice. And then later it became like, there's a story and there's a, that person looks like maybe they're in an abusive relationship. Oh, and they're getting right. out of it. Right. Right. This was like old school. Just like, yeah. we're singing a song and you're with us. Here we go. Yeah. And so that was really cool. I thought that uh, sometimes we get so caught up in, you know, there's great one. Uh, uh, this is America. Fantastic video. Fantastic. That, that got a bunch of awards. Amazing, but not that simplicity of just like, here's yeah. the music and the people who made it. So, awesome. um, so people can go up to, uh, for instance, Facebook, uh, dot com, irresponsible music. Yep. And, uh, have links to, to the video there. Um, and, uh, irresponsible yes, music.com. Yep. Um, you can find them. So, uh, I want to play a little snippet from the song itself. All like, right. Do you want to set this up at all or? Cool. Well, we'll just uh, bang right into it. Let's just bang right into this rock and roll track, man. All right. So this is uh, "Beautiful Baby," the uh, part of the new video uh, from Irresponsible. The fun never stops when you're with me, dear. Laughing through the night, and when lightning strikes, I will calm your fear. Always by your side. And what if I say I love you? Does it scare you? I think this is a great song for that type of video. I think you nailed it, right? Because it's just energy and fun. Heck yeah. Yeah. And so, awesome. So go check out that video. Let's move over to Chad with Stone Drive, where we can go through each of our guests here. Uh, You're up at Dangerously Delicious Pies in Washington, D.C. on that same day, Saturday, March 9th. So if you want to go into the district, we've got a place to take uh, take you there. If you don't want to go into the district, we've got a show for you as well. Um, You have a track called Chasing Demons from a self-titled... It's the self-titled track from... Self-titled item, I, 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 self-titled track <laughs> from the album of the same name. Did I do that right? So yeah, something like I that. I, I mean, well, I say I can you, cheat because I know the answer to yeah, it, but I, I don't. Know. I don't know if that was right. <laughs> you have an album it. called Chasing Demons, yes, sir. And this is a track from that album, also called Chasing Demons. Yeah, that it, was more English. It's uh, <laughs> so we, you know, people ask our genre, and we always say rock and roll, but we also say space rock because we like to sometimes kind of like uh, trip it out a little bit, yeah, uh, with some effects and and kind of scene setting and that sort of deal. So. Uh, I'd say this song was our best representation of that. We did use kind of a lot of different sound samples and like post-processing uh, to try to kind of do the quiet to loud to quiet to loud thing with like a, a hard outro. So yeah, it was uh, a fun one. It's the longest. I mean, it won't be long here, but uh, <laughs> longest track on the uh, the record. And, uh, you know, it, it just uh, I think really embodies kind of what we're about. So this is this is kind of one of the more peripheral songs, right? Because usually you're more straight ahead rock, right? Yeah, we we do a lot of like uh, blues rock, grunge rock, you know, very kind of just, uh, you know, I'm still like tapping my foot from uh, Ryan's song yeah. uh, before. And uh, we love to do that. But sometimes we like to just kind of like trip it out a little bit. And, and this is uh, perfect. We were talking about how albums used to have kind of B-sides that, that weren't the mainstream of that band, but they were experiments. They were things that were a little different and uh, reaching out beyond their com- comfort zone. Yeah, this is not a uh, uh, the first one that we put out as a, a single for sure, but yeah. it's uh, it's one that you know if we we kind of love the best, or you know you'll you'll probably get different <laughs> answers from from different uh, guys in the band. But uh, I think this musicians, is one of my favorites. Musicians do that a lot, right? The favorite that the musicians like to do is not often the favorite that the band like the fans really like. Uh-huh. It's the one that we're like we're really proud of and it's like trippy and weird and like it it's really fun for us to play and it's the one that like we did something that we weren't sure we'd be able to accomplish or something like right there's something to it that you're like yeah that took some risk with it yeah Mm -hmm. and the the fans are usually more like i like the one that's really catchy you know and you're like oh we'll play that but this is the one we really like so what you're saying keith is that those b-sides were like the early music industry version of felt cute might delete later picks (laughs) 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 yes That would be exactly it. Uh, All right. So let's play this uh, again. This is Chasing Demons uh, from our good friends, uh, Stone Driver.
ties up really well by accident. That was great. Two two different kind of genres, but again, just energy, right? Like Hell this yeah. would be a good lineup. We need to make a show happen. I'm I, I was going to hit you up after this, uh, yeah, let's this, do it. this interview. To, uh, I think this is something up. Can't wait. This would be great. So uh, if you want to hear either are. of those what, songs. What are we up to now? Our ninth podcast, Another Wasted Hour, Concert Matchmakers? Yeah, Dang. exactly. <laughs> uh, so uh, fast forward to the one hour mark to listen to Irresponsible, uh, it, the whole track from uh, them. And then fast forward to the. One hour, two minutes, 48 mark, seconds. Uh, to listen to Stone Driver. <laughs> See, I left the space for you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're very considerate. Dan from Stone Driver here. (laughs) Dan from Stone Driver. (laughs) Actually, we have a Dan. It's our drummer. Oh, okay. There you go. Um, And then I've got two Dans in my band. I feel so sorry for you just even having (laughs) one. Dan one and Dan two. I can't see. So what we're gonna do? So we're running low on time. Um, So here I'm gonna give you some instructions. We're gonna move into a thing we call uh, "Please God, just get one right." All right. This is our game show. Usually people will spend time like him and like, oh, what could be the answer uh-huh. of that? Let's limit that because we want to try and get to your stories at the end of the show here. We've got about five minutes for that. Uh, or, well, five five to seven minutes to make sure that we actually get to those. So um, so if you don't know, that's okay. Throw out an idea. Like uh, You can right. consult a little if you want. I think it's going to be a difficult one in general. I'm going to give that to you already. What happened is our previous guest, uh, Albino Rhino, uh, they were here uh, last show. Um, they did this as well. By the way, they played uh, Friday, March 1st at Roofers Union in Adams Morgan. Um, and you can go check them out at facebook.com slash albino rhino dot US. So uh, that way you know where to find them when you find out what the category is. Are you ready? Yes. They, Born ready. They picked a category for you. It is 18th century Spanish history. Bam. How you feeling? I'm a little nervous. <laughs> Yeah, I, I would be too. <laughs> this is this is what our guests do to no each other. No comprende. Yeah. <laughs> Expert in 17th century, but we'll see how I do in 18th century. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> My <so>, man. <laughs> so the good news is that if you don't get any, you can take a, a horrible category and hand that off to our next guest. So at the end, think about okay. a category you want them to have. All right. Uh, so without further ado, let's get into this. Adam, how about you start us off? The 18th century for Spain kicked right off with the Succession War when the childless slash heirless Charles II needed a replacement. The two main competitors for the title were Philip and the Archduke Charles. Whoever won could potentially cause a huge shift in power from amongst the European countries. Which two countries did these contenders hail from and had the most to gain from their success? So two countries, successors mm. for Spain's throne. So... I guess we're on radio, so I, I yeah. People can't see just the absolute dumbfounded, <laughs> like, scared look on my Chad, face. Chad, honestly, every week, right? It, uh, <laughs> this is what this one get. hurts. Yeah, this one hurts. I feel like it hurts it's quite like a that, bit. Yeah, that bit it hurts when quite they a bit. Yeah, when they ask people like simple questions on the street on like the late night shows and like they can't answer them. Like yeah, like Philip and Charles both sound like British names to me. Yeah, but. uh but to keep things quick, I'm just going to go out there. I'm going to say Germany and Austria. All right. Do you have any any other that you want to jump in with? Do you have a guess? I, w- I would guess Britain or Britain and France, but uh, this Britain gentleman, Ryan, looks a lot smarter than me. So I would, uh, <laughs> I kind of want to give it to him. I would be cheating off of his uh, <laughs> test right in, now. Between the two of you, you said the correct answer. The answer was France and Austria. My yeah. man. Wow. Hell yeah. Dude, Austria from the top deck. We yeah. nailed it. Yeah, dude. That's we pretty good. It, dude. Yeah. Well, that was pretty good. Two out of four. We're back, you know, <laughs> being all star in like baseball. Yeah. Man. I, I mean, I wouldn't have gotten it. So don't feel like these are easy questions because they're not. In fact, finding them was hard. Um, so <laughs> I went more with art because I tried to. Um, try a lot of history things and and Adam had grabbed a lot of them. And so I went with historical art um, since I'd like to think of myself as an artist. Yeah. Making a podcast uh, featuring artists such as Francisco Goya, which art movement became fully developed by the end of the 18th century. I will give you a hint. This is one throughout Europe. It's not necessarily just Spain, but um, also popular in Spain. Oh, okay. End of the what? 18th, 18th century. century. Yeah. It had happened throughout the 18th century, but it became fully developed as a as a movement. At Francisco that point. de Goya. Yeah. yeah, it a movement or a form, art form so, or whatever. Just thinking out loud, this is like post 
Renaissance. Renaissance. Yep, yeah. that's correct. Mm-hmm. Um, Any um, ideas? Uh, yeah, let's see here. Let's just take a stab at her. Yeah, let's do um, it. That's pretty much how the game works. <laughs> you've, you've figured it out. Modernist? I mean, uh, no, that's too far. Yeah, I think it's a little too, too far. Yeah, we're too, too modern. Uh, What's in between there? Yeah. Hmm. This is where, like, I feel yeah. like I'm like at the restaurant and I'm smelling the glass of wine, and I really am just like, no idea what it tastes <laughs> like. But I'm pretending to ponder. Yeah, like, yeah oh, exactly. Yeah. Just mm, trying to pull out one be? smart word. <laughs> Are those tannins? Mm. Mm, yes. <laughs> All right, I need a guess. Okay. Uh, uh, pointillism. That's not even right. <laughs> That's a thing. That is a thing. I will go with it, and I will. <laughs> yeah. I will double down on that. Uh, not quite. Uh, romanticism. Oh, that's oh, the word I was looking for. Yeah. Yeah. yeah now that it was on the it. tip of my tongue. <laughs> yeah. All right, Adam. The Spanish Inquisition had been established centuries before in 1478, but still held largely diminished powers during the 18th century. Many events like the French Revolution, a greater belief in Enlightenment theories, and political necessity eventually led to its demise. Under whose reign was the Spanish Inquisition finally abolished? These oh, aren't that's easy. A, that's an easy one. Yeah, I'm try- it's kind of hard to tell with the lowest re- resolution, but I think Chad just glared at me. <laughs> <laughs> it's my normal look. It's not personal. He has <laughs> resting glare face. <laughs> RGF. Yes. That'll be, uh... All right. So, what's your answer? Um, Fernando the Second. I think that's a really good guess. Adam. Charles the Fourth. Oh, right. oh, I had one word right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one out of three is still, you're doing good in baseball. I yeah, mean, exactly. Um, all right. Uh, aside from the disasters of war, what is the English translation of the other series of Goya's fam- most famous paintings expressing his dark inner feelings and troubles? So we speak spoke about Francisco Goya in the previous question. So you had two series of paintings, one called The Disasters of War, and then uh, this series. What is the English version of it? Uh, uh, surround, and it was around expressing his dark inner feelings and troubles. Monsters. Good. And you have a question? Do you have one? Goblins. <laughs> Goblins and monsters. <laughs> I believe that's a video game, guys. Um, so uh, oh, nice. No, uh, the black painting. The black painting. Yeah. Whoa. Oh. So I actually, uh, I do have a story about tat. that. Oh, I've actually seen a ton of these paintings. Uh, when I was in college, I went over to Spain on a study abroad thing. Okay. And they were so nice so as to take us around to these museums because they knew that us delinquents would not get there on our own. So they bust <laughs> us around to all the museums and like get we just there. like we will osmosis. culture you. Yeah. 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 We, we were forcibly cultured and uh yeah. And Goya, so you saw some of the yeah, black... some of the Goyas and oh, yeah, that, that okay. guy was super good and really, really intense. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them are very well yeah. dark, you know, in theme. Yeah. Um all right, Adam. This Spanish friar is credited with spreading enlightenment ideas throughout Spain during the 18th century, most notably his essays and other writings espousing empirical and scientific thought and attempting to debunk many of the popular myths and superstitions. What is his name? What was the guy's name from Robin Hood? Friar the the Tuck? Or what? Hmm. Friar Tuck? Yes. <laughs> Francis Connor? Yeah. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Um, Go with the only friar you know. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Can we Paul a Dean? Is it a yeah. deep fat friar? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> All right, I guess. Do you have it? Uh, is friar in his name? <laughs> I mean, technically, yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, friar. Um, Tuck. Francis. <laughs> Francis. All right. Francis, you thought the Spanish friar's name is Francis. <laughs> Francisco. I'm saying that one again. <laughs> it was Friar Benito Geronimo Fe- Feu y Montenegro. I don't oh, know what that third yeah, name, how yeah. you pronounce that third name. F E I J O with an accent O. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, man. Yeah. Yeah. I believe nice. I believe it's pronounced special person. <laughs> um all right, last but not least, what 1656 painting in the Museo de Preo de Madrid by Diego Vazquez? Velazquez. I know that Velazquez, one. Velazquez, Velazquez, uh, the leading artist of the Spanish Golden a- a- Age. 
uh, depicts the lifestyle of 17th century Spain. I couldn't find an 18th century one, so I went with this. But that's your wheelhouse, so I figured <laughs> I'd throw you a bone. Yeah, hey, throw me a bone. What painting depicts 17th century Spain? Um, it's in a museum. It's got to be good. It's got to be good. <laughs> um, Any guesses? The Homestead. No, it is uh, Las Meninas. Las Meninas. Las Meninas. I, all right. I swear to God, I was going to guess this one. What? Let me tell you about Las Meninas. Yes, okay? please do. So this guy is the painter for the king of Spain, okay? Yeah. And you, you have to be really deferential and stuff. But as we all know, artists are a bit rebellious, okay? Mm -hmm. And so this guy, Velasquez, I guess is what you'd say his name. Yeah. Um, he paints lots. He's painting a picture of the royal family. Okay. Oh, I hope I don't have the wrong painting, but I'm going to tell a story about this one anyway, right? <laughs> well, we're running short on time, so let's make it fast. Oh, gosh, I think I got the wrong painting. I'm just making, wasting your time. You know so what? Here's look what it we'll up. Do. Look up Las Meninas and judge it for yourself. Yeah, you look it up. We'll have you back on the show and you'll tell us about yes. it. Yes. All right. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> All right. What is our uh, category for our next guest? We need to know that. Quantum physics? I mean, like. Are really, you good with let's quantum go with physics? quantum physics. Quantum like physics. It. All right. You bastards. We can do oh, this. I have to look up trivia like questions one. about quantum physics now. Vinyl Rhino, I am unfollowing you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So quantum physics it is. We've got a couple minutes left. We've went long on that because we're having too much fun. That's the problem. Too so much. let's jump straight into near and far. Um, Chad, uh, tell us about uh, Afghanistan. Far! I sort of heard there's a story there. That's what it's all about. I, I was just, uh, it, it's uh, it's not much of a story, just an experience. Yeah, I, I would say the uh, it's just the most, we're talking about art and, and, and different things, certainly man-made. Mm -hmm. One of the most stunning things I've ever seen is uh, just the, the night sky over there. If you oh. can imagine just like the complete lack and some of the more you know, remote areas of any electricity whatsoever, yeah. any type of, you know, pollution, et cetera. Mm -hmm. It is literally my first time out there sitting down with a couple fellas having a bourbon and a cigar, literally looking, you know, no light whatsoever yeah. at the most brilliant, you know, night sky I'd ever seen in, in my life. Uh, a lot of people don't know just like how beautiful it is there if it wasn't for and how much is up there, right? Because oh, we're yeah. used to seeing a few stars almost. You can see the Milky cities. Way. Yeah. I mean, it, it's uh, even better than, you know, some of the national parks and whatnot I've been to. It, it just, uh, it's it's unreal. And that's uh, not a funny story. Or no, that's a, cool. You know, great one. Yeah. But, uh, People can look up. Uh, there's a dark star initiative or dark skies initiative. And some towns and stuff are trying to make it so there's no light pollution here in the United States. Cool. Oh, wow. So they turn off all their lights and nice. everything at night. Very good. Yeah, it's like the satellite map of North Korea relative yeah. to like South Korea. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Ryan, how about you? You said uh, something about a beach party. Tell us about that. Yeah. Went to Brazil one time in like 2013. Oh, nice. And I uh, love Brazil. a good beach party. Yeah. And I met this really cool guy and uh, he's like, I live an hour away and a couple of weeks from having this beach party. Come on down. I didn't think anything of it. Sure. A couple of weeks later, I was actually available and okay. in the area. So I was like, all right, man, let's like, Might let's as well. go. Yeah. And uh, so I go down to this beach party. It was super fun. You know, I was kind of paranoid about like partying on the beach, but you know, it yeah. was fine. And uh they had some guitars, so we were strumming. I think I brought mine, oh, so cool. I was strumming some of the Brazilian guys down there. And uh, what was really notable about the evening for me was that when we're having these sing-along stuff, they knew every word to every song. Seriously. And I'm telling you, if it was in English, there was yeah. people singing every word of it with me. If it That's was wild. in Brazilian and they were rapping 100 miles an hour, yeah. they knew all the words. It That's was awesome. That's amazing. It's, it shows that music is the thing that really can cross yeah. borders, right? Something brings us all together. It By the way, bridges, not yeah. walls. I did have the right painting, Las Meninas. All right, we'll talk Artists about it in next the time. Excellent. Well, <laughs> thank you so much for coming out, guys. Did you have a good time? Thank you, man. It was awesome. Wonderful time. Thank Excellent. you for having us. Uh, just so you don't forget, we have Irresponsible and Stone Driver here in studio. Irresponsible has a brand new video called Beautiful Baby. Uh, they're going to play Saturday, March 9th. It's a, a 311 tribute at Jam and Java in Vienna, Virginia. Go check them out at Irresponsible Music or Facebook.com slash Irresponsible Music. On the other side, we have Stone Driver, Saturday, March 9th as well. Dangerously Delicious Pies, Washington, D.C. with Betamax. But go check out their album, Chasing Demons, at StoneDriver.com. 
Uh, please like our post, follow us, retweet us, do all of that stuff. We're running out of time. Thank you so much uh, for all, everything everyone does. Most of all, thanks to Stone Driver and Irresponsible for wasting a perfectly good hour with us. This has been another Wasted Hour, and if you just realized that, don't blame us. We warned you. The sun never sets, only shines for you. Always on my mind. I'm running around holding hands with you. Give you all my time. And what if I say I love you? Does it scare you to think I do? You're all that I ever wanted, girl. You're making my wish come true. stops when you're with me dear laughing through the night and when lightning strikes i will calm your fear always by your side and what if i say i love you does it scare you to think i do you're all that i ever wanted girl you're making my wish come true
Picking up a cigarette out of being smoked Picking me a fat boat of all the being choked I can lose for winning but I'm gonna give a try Never had no reason 